this talk is about HPIB storage emulation uh, with a, a focus on uh, the integral PC at the end. So what are some of the current HPIB storage solutions that are out there? Well, there's legacy HP drives. There's HP drive, which is a software solution we'll talk about. There are USB to HPIB interface solutions. There is everything but the kitchen sink. There is HP disk. Those are, those are the solutions that are out there currently. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, each of these in turn. Start with legacy HP disk. Well, let's face reality. There's a diminishing pool of working legacy drives out there. The supply versus demand mean that the available, dri the available drives prices are increasing. To put things in perspective, if you buy an external hard drive and you're counting on it living more than three years, you're, you're living on the edge. We're talking about legacy HP drives that are 20 and 30 years old. So counting on these things to work isn't a good bet. Uh, legacy HP drives aren't getting any younger. They're all way beyond their end of life and they're dropping like flies. Uh, my little uh, rest in peace down there represent some of the Nighthawk drives that I have that are sitting on my shelf dead. Floppy drives are also, they're slow, they're limited capacity, and their availability is, is reducing as well. So it's not just hard drives, the floppy drives, although the floppy drives are a heck of a lot easier to repair. They last longer. They last longer and they're, they're easier to repair. So I did a, a quick uh, point sample went out to eBay on August 1st and said, well, what's out there that's available? And this will be variable over time. You know eBay, the supply varies all over the place. But I, I went out and, and took a look. Now, the notes are, here are interesting. Of the nine drives that were available, okay, three of them were listed as non-working. Okay? They're honest, at least. <laughs> yeah, they're honest. They're non-working. Uh, Three of them were listed as working, but were defined as powers on and spins up. Okay, so it makes noise when you turn it on. Okay, uh, two of the nine were working, but with no explanation of what working meant, how it was tested or anything else. And one of the nine said it was fully tested, but with no explanation of how it was tested. None of the, none of the sellers indicated that the drives had actually been connected to anything and read. So this, is, this was the supply for, from eBay on legacy drives. Okay, next solution, HP Drive. So HP Drive is software that sits on a computer, uh, a host computer, that, where the host computer has an HPIB uh, interface card in it. Uh, most of the cards out there used to be ISA cards. ISA is sort of going obsolete itself, so you got PC, some PCI cards. But the advantage of this solution is, is they, these, these interface cards use a custom integrated circuit that implements the HPIB protocol. So the, the protocol is well managed, and quite frankly, the HP drive software is also awesome, well-tested, community-created software, and the HP Drive uh, website's listed here at the bottom. So this replaces, uh, this requires a dedicated PC and an HPIB interface card and the HP Drive software. It does emulate both disk drives and tape drives. It's excellent, it's well-tested, it's tuned, and it's supported. So this is a good solution if you can find an old computer that has an ISA slot and you can find an old HPIB card with an ISA and you're willing to put it all together and, and, and work with it. Next solution, USB to HPIB interfaces. Okay, so, so first, uh, uh, we, I had Richard as my pre-talk. Uh, he talked about CCCs. Uh, <laughs> Well, it turns out that there's a very wide price range on GPIB to USB hardware. If you, if you get an Agilent 
uh, interface, it's, you know, it's listed in many places as a couple thousand dollars. Uh, you can order from China and get uh, lower price interfaces. Usually they're uh, like the one that's the NI, they call it National Instruments interfaces. Uh, I went out, and as far as the forums are concerned, people have had mixed results with these. Uh, the, there's a low speed version and a high speed version. You, you really need the high speed version for a lot of the data transfer. It still requires a PC. Uh, and it still requires software, and the software that you get with these is the driver software, so that it, it can talk to it. It's not the disk emulation software. For that, you, you need HP Drive again. You need to use HP Drive to emulate the, the, disk, the disk software. And HP Drive isn't set up to go over USB to HPIB, so for tape drives. So HP Drive will work with, as a disk emulator with these if you can get the speed you need. Uh, for instance, uh, in talking with Anders, this, the speed of, uh, of these isn't good enough for an HP 9000 if you wanted to do uh, an HPIB uh, server interface. Next, everything but the kitchen sink. Uh, how many of you in this group have an HP 85 and don't have an everything but the kitchen sink? Okay, these are folks that you need to be paying attention right now. Okay, uh, everything but the kitchen sink is a one card solution that emulates uh, the tape drive, so you don't have to have the tape drive in your system working. It, enter, it emulates disk drives and you can, with a 16 gig card, you can store lots of HP 85 disk images. It emulates the RAM, it em emulates extended memory, it emulates all 18 commercially available ROMs. Okay, uh, If you have an 85 and you actually want to use it the most productively, you want to buy in everything but the kitchen sink. Now, this is not a general HPIB disk solution, but it is the solution for an HP 85 system. So if you want to use, if you have an integral, this ain't going to help you. But if you have an 85, uh, this is something you should seriously consider getting. Uh, for those that have one, have I uh, properly... Ex uh, you haven't even covered how good it is. Yeah, so I've, I, th believe it or not, that, was, that talk was an understatement of, of how important this is to you as an 85 owner. Okay, next is HP Disk. And uh, this is uh, the solution I've been evaluating, uh, working with Anders, who's my co author. Okay, HP Disk. HP Disk is an emulator that emulates an HP Disk connected over GPIB and using either the Amiga or the CS80 or SS80 protocol. The emulated disks are on uh, a micro SD card. On the same card, formatted as FAT32, uh, which, you know, the, you, you guys all know what that is. It's the standard uh, Windows uh, uh, formatting, are, whoops, are configured uh, two files that determine several of the parameters of the device, and we'll, sh we'll show you those in a second. The micro SD card th th can then be read in any ordinary PC uh, with, a, with a card reader. Uh, HP Disk is powered by a standard external hard drive AC adapter, 12 volts. Now, to put that in perspective, this is, this is one of those cards in a, in a standard box. Uh, if you look at it in the picture, that, those are, that, that's real size here. So that's your HPIB connector, and that's the box. So the box is barely bigger than two HPIB connectors. Okay. The file format. Uh, so we'll, we'll look over here. The, what, there's two files. One's describe.config, and this, in this, you specify all of the uh, parameters that describe uh, an HP hard drive, or any hard drive, but an HP hard drive. And I won't go through all the details, but uh, because quite frankly, uh, I don't, 
completely know all of the details on this. I count on Anders, who's created the, the characteristics for each of the disks. Okay, those are all there, out there and given for you. So this, is, this basically specifies the different kinds of disks that you have, different sizes. And then over here are, is the corresponding, this is a disk name and the file that's on the uh, SD card that, that uh, has your data in it. Now this, this file is basically, it's a linear image of the disk. So, you know, pretend you just copy a disk from start to end with DD, uh, a DD copy, and uh, this then, emu the, this emulates, it does the breaks and, sh and all the stuff that you need to emulate the disk. Now, it turns out that HP, uh, of course, when they defined these specs, they did the typical HP things, which is, is they put a lot of forethought into this, the spec and how the spec worked. So it turns out that you can, uh, you can build a disk, if you will, a virtual disk that's substantially bigger than anything that HP ever did, okay? Uh, and it will work because the protocol, the HPIB protocol and the SS protocol and CS80 protocol will support that. So you not only can emulate the disks that you have that are dying, you can emulate a lot bigger disk. And if you think about it, you know, we were talking about in the day, a 50 megabyte disk was, was a big thing. And now it's hard to find a two gigabyte uh, a micro SD card. So you could put a lot of disks on, on, a, on a drive. Okay, so this is a close up of the uh, HP disk. You have a display. Uh, you have uh, two buttons, a, a previous disk button and a go to next button. You have three lights, which are activity lights when, when the disk is being accessed and whatnot. Uh, and you have under the, under the top two buttons, you've got a select disk button. The display is a two line display. It talks about the disk name and the disk type. On the back, you have a reset button, the micro SD slot. 12 volt DC input, and that's a standard plug for your, like what you use for your Seagate external hard drive. What kind of current do you need? Do what? I don't know the spec, but it's well under the, uh, the spec for the external hard drives. So if, if you've got an AC adapter from your, your Western Digital or Seagate hard drive, plug it right in and it'll work. It'll also work at a different voltage uh, there's, a, there's a switch inside. And then the HPIB connector. So if you look up here, the way this works is we're, right now this has got the Splash 88 uh, image, which is uh, a, a floppy disk that has the Splash newsletter from 1988. Uh, it's, a, on a 90, it's a 9122C, so that's a floppy image. So that's right here. Okay, so you tell it to go to the next disk, and it says that next disk is a splash 871. So the next disk down is 871. Okay, then you tell it select, and it's, now you've got that selected, and it's got the disk drive. So this is like really straightforward. So on an integral, what you do, this is a, a Unix system, okay, You've got this selected, and let's say you've been using this. You unmount the disk, you select, and you don't have to select the next one. You can go down three or four, but you get to the disk you want, you hit select disk, then you mount the disk on the integral, and you're up and running on the next disk image. Okay. So what's the current status? Oh, by the way, I should back up. There's a little picture over here. Uh, for those of you that don't know what we, we talked about it earlier, and you actually saw pictures of it in earlier presentations, but for those of you that don't know what an integral is, it's something that looks like a little bit like a sewing machine when it's in, when it's, in its box. It's, uh, this uh, is an electroluminescent display. It's Windows. It's an HPUX System 5 operating system. Uh, it's got HPIB in the back. Uh, it can go up to eight gig of RAM, and it's got 
uh, Unix, the system integration, the system engineering ROM, it's got all of the system engineering Unix functions in ROM, uh, which is not, a, again, doesn't take up the RAM space. So it's a neat little Unix machine. It was meant to replace the HP 85. So it runs 85 basic, it runs HP UX. Uh, it has got a display and it's got an inkjet printer on the top. So if you think about what, what oh, and it's got a floppy disk, three and a half inch floppy disk. So if you think about an 85, an 85 had a tape drive, it had a printer, it had a display, and it had a keyboard. Okay, that's what this is the next generation of. And this had Unix instead of just HP Basic. But it also ran HP Basic. So that's the integral. That's the, the box uh, that uh, I, when, I, when I've been saying it, I'm going to give you more details on how this works with the integral. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So we just talked about that how you can select one of 16 disk images. So those 16 files on the side are different Im disk images that you can select between. They can be floppy images. They can be 50 megabyte or bigger hard drives that you can select between. Okay. Uh, it supports floppy disk emulation, a wide variety of hard drives, 91, 21, 22, 33, 79, 57, 79, 58, 79, 59. Uh, think about whatever legacy drive you have out there, it will support it. And it'll support drives that you don't even have. Uh, this feature, even a small 2 gig micro SD can support lots of legacy floppy and hard drive images. Uh, this feature alone makes HP disk a must have for, I, for inter, anybody that's got an integral system that really wants to do anything with it. So you got that. This feature alone makes, I mean, think about it. This thing is tiny. Uh, it's got a lot smaller footprint than any of the legacy drives. It works and it's going to continue to work. Uh, by the way, if you have an HP instrument that wants to store things to a hard drive, this is your beast. You, this is what you would store that on. Uh, this has been tested with uh, lots of other systems, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. HP Disk currently must be the only device on the Integral's HPIB. So far, this is the only system that we've tested that Anders has tested where it locks out other HPIB devices on on the loop. So. There's something going on with the integral, the way the integral deals with HPIB that's different than the HP 9000, than the HP 85, than dot, dot, dot. Uh, so this is something, you know, this is something that's a work in progress. But, uh, so if the HP disk is on, neither the HP disk nor the other device that's on HPIB will work. Uh, HP disk also has a feature where three devices uh, where on most systems you can not only access the one selected disk, but you can also access three other disks. Uh, that feature is also not recognized by an integral yet. Now, uh, uh, we, we talked a lot about this. So HP disk boards are available and assembled units are occasionally available as time permits. Uh, I'm not selling these, I have no uh, other than I'm a, an enthusiastic supporter and uh, I, I'm not uh, advocating this and I, I, I made sure Anders was okay with me saying that uh, telling a group of potential uh, hungry customers that this is the case. But um, it's, uh, I, I would swear by it. Okay. Next, uh, HP Disk features wish list. Okay, I've got must, high wants, and wishes. Must, I define as features that are needed to be usable. Okay, and from my, whoops, and from my perspective, come back, my perspective, all of the musts are met. It, it meets re reliable read writes. It's got, it's so much better than the legacy disk. It's fast, it's small form factor. Uh, the musts are met. High wants. These are features that would significantly enhance functionality. The device getting, getting it so that it not only implemented one disk, but four, uh, and being able to copy between those quickly and, and whatnot. Uh, 
that would be that would significantly enhance the the functionality of the system. So that's a high want. Multiple devices on an IPC HIB HPIB that's another in my mind high want. Uh, you'd want to be able to put maybe another floppy drive on it or something like that. But again, you got access to much more disk space than you've ever had before, and I'll show you how significant that is in a second. Wishes. These are nice to have with lower benefits. The, the first one is configuration file configurable HP disk would be nice. Right now you actually have to use a PIC programmer to, uh, to program the firmware. Now, it's so simple to do, even I can do it, okay? Which, uh, for those of you that knew, if you knew me better, you'd know that that would say that everybody in this room can do it, guaranteed. Uh, and there's pictures and everything to, to do it. Uh, you do have to buy a, a, a PIC programmer, which are really cheap on AliExpress. And even though they're cheap, they do work. Okay, the second thing is, is built-in, uh, oh, I, I said, that, I said the, the firmware update first. The configuration file configurable HPIB is another one. Right now, the HPIB address of an HP disk is always zero, okay? So that says you can't have two HP, HP disks on the same HPIB because they're both zero. Uh, that's for those folks that are, are really wanting to have a lot of access to disks and have two of those those beasts, and that's, that again, that's why it's a, a real low want. Okay, so uh, HP disk sample image files, to put this in perspective, there's, you, these, this is a list of some of those that are out there, and you can see that, you know, they've got NetBSD, they've got 9816 and 9000s, uh, there, there's an HP85 and HP150, uh, these are all images uh, for SD cards that are already populated with hard drive and floppy images loaded with the software for the, those machines. Whoops. So for example, over here, the contents of the HP Integral zip archive contains all of the floppy images that HP released for the HP Integral, okay? So it's got all of the floppy images and I've, I've just put descriptions over there. So all of the software that they had released. And they've got, not on, he's not, not only got the, the floppy images, but he's got hard drive images. So larger hard drive images, 40, 40 meg hard drive images where all that software is not only, not only the floppy versions, but it's as if you loaded all of that floppy software onto a hard drive. And so you can select that, those, each of those uh, hard drive images and you've got access to all of the, the, that, for all that software loaded. So again, if you have an integral, this, this gets you access to uh, the, a large library of integral software. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, the, the, the 12 diskette set, if looking over here, see the, these are the system utilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the equivalent of pumping all 12 into the install and you end up with a you, system you, You've got both. You've got the individual disks, yeah. if you want to get access to those, or you can get those after they've all been loaded into, into one hard drive. This is, you know, a really quick way to, to boot into playing with an integral. Okay, so I talked about the HP, HPIB storage options. We talked about legacy drives. Uh, betting on these forever is not a good bet. Okay, uh, HP drive, uh, it's a mature solution. The disk and tape emulation is well proven and there's great support. Uh, it requires a, a PC with an HPIB interface card, and those interface cards are getting harder to find. Uh, IPC compatible, uh, I couldn't find anyone that has actually used one with an IPC, uh, but everything that everybody said says that it, you will not have a problem. 
the USB to HPAB interface, the USB speed may limit the, the, your data rates. The Agilent interfaces are expensive. It still requires a PC and software. Uh, you don't have to have an old HPIB card, though. Uh, and again, on the IPC compatibility, folks are generally telling me that if, if I tried to go down that route, it should work. Everything but the kitchen sink is the preferred solution for HP8, 85, 86 systems uh, capabilities, including HP disk emulation. But it's not, a, it's not a general HPIB solution. So it's not going to help your instrument. It's not going to help your integral. It's not going to help your uh, HP 150 DOS system or, or uh, a workstation. And then there's the HP disk emulator, uh, which again has been tested with an 85, a, a 9340, 9816, measurement mainframes, logic analyzers, spectrum analyzers, and the integral. Uh, it's the smallest form factor. It's three inches by one inch by uh, five inches, uh, and it's uh, very easy to use. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Great. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with HP? 120 and 125 CPM machines? Yes. Um, will they support a hard drive on those? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Okay, I've used, I've used those with uh, floppy drives, but I don't know if those support a hard drive. Not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure, okay. but is it HP? I don't know, were they HPIB? Yes, yeah. Okay. Then very very likely it will work. Yeah, it's uh, well. It'll definitely work with this because this emulates the 9121 and 9122 at least, and it. Uh, well, I didn't know the 120 and 125s supported hard drives at all. Uh, HP never said. I mean, they only sold. Uh, We'd have to look it up. I don't know. Yeah, we'd have to look it up. I don't know. Others? Bed? Okay.